Next up, we have uh, Tab Canvas. Um, some of you may recognize Josh. Uh, Josh is the co-founder of Mogotix, which is an SV New Tech alum. Uh, they presented here where I first started organizing about two years ago. Um, and he has since moved on to do Tap Canvas, which is really cool. So, hey everybody. Uh, so I'm Josh, and this is Adrian. Hello. And as Joe mentioned, uh, the last time I was up here was a couple years ago, and I was talking about a ticketing company called Mogotix. Uh, we were fortunate in that company to um, go on after after our demo to uh, ticket Facebook's F8 Developer Conference, um, the uh, Microsoft Windows Phone 7.5 launch, events for the Recording Academy, uh, Wharton, a lot of other great customers. But uh, what we're going to talk to you uh, about tonight is, is much cooler. Um, <laughs> Tap Canvas lets anybody build a single-use uh, HTML5 mobile app, almost a disposable mobile app. And what does this mean exactly? Well, it means that you use it, and then you throw it away. So who gets excited about something like Tap Canvas? Well, event organizers get excited. Uh, you know, they're spending money to print programs. They could build an app instead. Ad agencies get excited because they're building one-off apps all the time. Uh, realtors get excited because they need to reach people on their phones, in open houses, on yard signs, um, and they want, they want to deliver a good mobile experience. So um, we've been working at this interface for um, many months now. We think we've got the best mobile app builder on the planet, and we want to show it to you. Uh, publicly for the first time. So we're just going to uh, create an app here. And let's call it... Uh, couldn't have picked it <laughs> so we made it really, really easy for people to build apps. Um, uh, so when you build an app, it's broken down into something that we call a widget. And so a widget, we're just going to add one here. It could be something like a contact form. It could be a gallery. Um, it could be a list of speakers with their biographies if you're organizing an event. So let's go ahead. Cool. Let's add uh, a contact form here. So we've added a contact form. Um, you can see it with some sample uh, placeholder data before you type in anything or, or add any data whatsoever. Uh, we can customize it however we like. And as soon as we do, we see it reflected in our app that we're building. So now I think we're going to try, um, let's add another widget here, I guess. So map here, um, this is a Google map. It's pinchable, it's <coughs> zoomable, it's got uh, Google Street View, which you're all going to miss once you upgrade to iOS 6. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And you can add this to your app in, in literally just a couple seconds. Cool. So, uh, you want to try a little experiment here? Okay, so we're going to do something that we've never done before. Um, we are going to see if we can uh, get this onto your phones right now. So, how many of you have uh, QR code scanners? Okay, so that's a pretty good number. So. Can any of you scan this QR code? Okay. Any luck? What's the Wi-Fi yeah, don't worry about the Wi-Fi. If you can get it, um, give me a give me a show of hands if you've got this on your phone right now. Make it bigger. Yeah, you can. Can I do the? There you go. Giant QR. Maybe the back, the back of the 
Yeah, let's, let's keep going. Keep going here. But, uh, does anyone I've, have it? I've got it. You got it. I can I can attest. Oh, that Joe can attest that, so. that we have a real product yeah. here. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> you got it. Okay, cool. All right. So um, so we're gonna go ahead and add. Sorry for those of you who missed out. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and just add a couple more widgets here. Let's do like uh, text. Um, Let's add uh, maybe speakers and maybe an agenda like that. So we've basically just added the components of an entire event app. And if you, if you like what you see, you can actually go in and you can put your data in. Um, if you don't, you can remove widgets, put other ones in. Um, it's basically your canvas to play with. So um, let's maybe try changing the color or something. And uh, yeah, and all the changes happen instantly. And, we're going to go ahead and publish this app, and uh, then those of you who uh, couldn't get the QR code will probably be able to get this. It's a really ugly app. <laughs> yellow. <laughs> Worst yellow ever. So, um, so that's Tap Canvas. So in, in just a couple of minutes, we've, we've basically created you know, the foundations of an event app, full featured. Um, you know, no pinching, no zooming, no panning with your finger. And it lives on the web, so it's super easy to get to. And, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of what else to say. Uh, we have our launch party tomorrow. You are all invited. We're over at the AOL building. Um, and we, uh, we're going to be in the press on Thursday, so look for us in All Things Digital. And thank you very much. Awesome. Great. I should clarify too, that app is awesome looking. I was just commenting on the yellow. So. <laughs> Questions? That's great stuff. So. Yes. What's your back end uh, being? Is there, can I have, um, what do you have on the back end of this app that I can store things and stuff like that? You mean what is the, what is it built in? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to, is there a back end data store on which that I can insert, uh, retrieve stuff, put stuff in, user information and stuff? Like that? Yes. Well, th there's no currently there's no uh, there's no way for your users to submit new data. If that's what you're asking. Uh, but we're you know we're an API based uh, product, so there's lots of opportunities for extending the product. So it's meant for just retrieving stuff like. Um, it's meant for making uh, for you know, people who do not have the technical skill to make a simple HTML5 app that they can share with their friends and eventually build a business upon. Uh, so, how is it, you know, wh why is it disposable? What's the difference between a disposable business model versus just a platform to build simple apps? Well, I like your description, I and mean, you could call it that. But what really makes it disposable is that we're delivering a native look and feel experience in a web app. So, you know, I'm trying to think of a good example here. Like, an ad agency builds apps all the time. Um, you know, maybe they build an app, an app for Pizza Hut or for ESPN, and those are great. You know, you want to install those on your phone and, and use them over and over again. That's great. But you're never going to go onto the App Store and install the Clorox app. So that's the kind of thing where it's, it's a touch point that they want to have with the user, and that's, that's what makes this disposable. The fact that it's HTML5, it lives on the web. If you want to add it to your home screen, you can do that. But we don't expect the majority of people to, to do that. Do you have an uh, iPad layout or Android layout? Uh, it works great on lots of different platforms. Um, looks looks wonderful on iPad as well. Um, it's, so it's based on jQuery Mobile, so it'll support anything that jQuery Mobile supports, which is pretty much everything. Um, yeah. Oh, just basic question. Then Tapa Campus do not make native application, just web app, right? Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, I can um, Yeah, you know, we, we thought about kind of the right way to approach that. Do we want to do HTML5? Do we want to do native? Um, it, it wouldn't be too hard to wrap something like this in, in a native wrapper using PhoneGap or other frameworks. But um, frankly, we haven't had any demand for it. Who are your competitors apart from, say, the Russian company, MyBuildApp? My well, 
boy, I don't want to rag on anybody here. Um, <laughs> there, are, there are a lot of app builders out there, and I would say that the quality is very, very mixed. Um, I would say that uh, in terms of single use or disposable, we're absolutely the only the only company I've ever seen that talks about that directly. Um, you could, you know, kind of use some of our competitors' products that way, like Widget Box, for example, which is very expensive. But um, but we're really the only ones hitting this market um, so directly, and we think that there's actually a really big untapped market here that's largely being served by print. Yes. What are you charge? Uh, we're, we're still kind of, um, yeah, so what are we going to charge? Um, I'm glad you actually like our product enough to think that, that people would pay us money for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, we're, we're still figuring out the pricing plans, um, but most likely we're going to have a, a combination of subscription uh, for people who use this a lot and also one-time use. Yes? How, how do you Question in the back. How much does it cost to use it? How much does it cost you that we are still figuring out the pricing plans, but it's probably going to be, um, you know, for for an event organizer who's fairly active, maybe twenty bucks a month. Time for one more. Should I use it for free now? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. How do you plan on protecting your app from a company like Eventbrite from rolling out this product feature and rolling it in with their set of features that they offer um, Yeah, so the question is how do we how do we protect our product from a company like Eventbrite, um, you know, kind of taking this and rolling it into their own feature set. Um, boy, it's interesting that you mentioned Eventbrite because uh, stay tuned because we're going to have some fun, fun announcements around that in the future. But um, yeah, you know, we, we worked really hard to build the best app builder on the planet. And I think if you look at um, some of the competitors, for example, if you look at some other companies that are doing something similar, you're not going to find um, an ease of use like this at all. Um, that's that's number one. And number two is eventually, you know, we could really see turning this into sort of an ecosystem where a company like Eventbrite, for example, could introduce an Eventbrite widget to our ecosystem that our users could then drop into their apps. One more. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, like. So this is just like manual stuff, like you put in the data in your form and then it shows up. But like, let's say I want to serve data from my server, how do I do that? Well, oh, okay. So at this point we just have very basic ways of doing that through RSS, uh, but there are plans to do more, uh, more complex integrations with third party sites. And, and would it support web services, like if I want to do something like Ajax stuff, like not just sort of static pages, but be more dynamic, like? Sure. Do, it doesn't do it right now. It doesn't do it right now. Right now we have RSS. Uh, you give us a feed and we'll show uh, uh, the news. Um, we have Twitter, which uh, we do have services that, uh, the widgets that pull data from external services. Uh, down the road, those should be more numerous. Great. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Um, so, a lot of great companies. Hope you all enjoyed that. Um, I think everyone from the companies will probably be here for networking uh, for this next hour. So, uh, feel free to approach them and ask more questions if you have them.